fact that that's what a real Christian looks like. Mm-hmm. That's what a real follower of Christ is about. All this other stuff is BS. Mm-hmm. You're full of crap. You don't understand the New Testament. You don't understand Jesus's words. You're a phony. This is the real thing. Yep. Welcome, everybody, to Lion's Den, episode 12. Again, my name's Eddie. I'm Brad. This is Alex. I was kind of hoping uh, Daryl was going to be able to make it to this one because it would definitely make it uh, much more humorous. So we'll get into that in a bit. But uh, it was just please uh, like, subscribe, share, let people know we're out there. Just trying to put out uh, some positivity, get the good word out. Um Today, we're going to talk about forgiveness. Not my favorite subject, I Mm -mm. will uh, be the first to admit. Yeah. Um, Like I said, I think Daryl and I are probably the most similar with this. Um, I would say, Brad, you're the most evolved, and you're definitely in a better position than Daryl and I, too, um, as far as this goes. (laughs) Um, When we talk about forgiveness, especially in the context of which, um, you know, a lion's den, we're, we're definitely faith driven. I mean, God is, you know, a prevalent part of our lives. Um, actually Alex just put a picture up on, I think it was Facebook recently, the tattoo. Yes. Yep. The father forgive us. So I'm going to give people a little tutorial on tattoos that, Usually when people put tattoos on themselves, it's something they're striving for. It's not always something they achieved. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's, so, it's an ideal, something they, they look at that they like. Sure. Yeah, Because yeah. a lot of times people are like, oh, yeah, you know, you're like, no, 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 I, I'm not there yet. Yeah, that, you don't that, understand. I'll slap you. That's <laughs> why I went through the pain of getting this put on huge on my back because I'm, I'm trying to work through it. Um, so I thought it was good timing. It's a subject I've kind of avoided. Um you know, we could have talked about it 11 episodes ago, um, but because you put the the picture up, I thought it was important to talk about. Um, so let me be clear with um, when it comes to forgiveness, the thing that has haunted my soul is forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. So when I think about the rock star that Jesus is and everything that he was going through in those moments and, you know, the heckling and the demeaning and, and everything and, you know, son of man, son of God and forgive them, father, they know not what they do. Um, it sets a really shitty precedent for the rest of us. Sure does. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of <laughs> takes the excuses out um, for the rest of the populace. And um, obviously it was by design, mm-hmm. you know, and it's in there for a reason, set it for a reason. Um, I think it's to consistently remind us of, you know, that person you don't want to forgive. Remember what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Think about where I was at and, you know, I found it in my heart to do it. So you definitely can. So when I talk about forgiveness, I'm really good at it on my terms. <laughs> That's a really good way of putting so, it. That's, <laughs> I am an all-star forgiver when you're good with it. There's an apology. Mm-hmm. I rubbed your nose in it quite a few times, dragged you behind my car. I There's no doubt in my mind that you are sorry and you're really sorry, which usually means you got a grand inquisition, might have been a light on your face. Are you sure that's what really happened? Are you sure you're really sorry? Um, push pins. Push pins in the heel. Yeah. Um <laughs> And I think it's so extreme for me is usually when, when I'm needing to forgive somebody, it's because a trust was broken right? Mm. and trust is sacred for me. And it's really hard to get it back with me. Um, when someone betrays my trust, uh, you know, I, the reason why I do all that, I feel like, okay, if it's important enough to you, you're going to take all this shit. Um, and you're going to come out on the other side of it. Cause if not, you're full of crap and you're not really sorry. Right. It's kind of like we were talking about love a couple episodes ago. Um, 
that you're constantly judging that, mm -hmm. you know, is this person sorry? Are they just saying that because they want something? Are they just saying that because there's a consequence of it, right. meaning not friend anymore, not relationship anymore, not working there anymore, whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm really good at forgiveness on my terms. And I laugh because I think Daryl and I are very similar in that regard. Because um, I remember talking to him about it sometime back. And he's like, yeah, I no problem forgiving people. Well, yeah, as long <laughs> as they're sorry. You know, they made amends. I apologized. Um, you know, they kind of went through all that stuff. The tricky part for me. And, and I also say there's a self-righteous side for me for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Um. So if I forgive this person, would they really learn? Are they going to be, are they going to hurt the next person where they can't really either physically harm me, emotionally harm me? So I've got to really teach a lesson to kind of, kind of like that shepherd mentality yep. of, well, I really got to put this person through the ringer because this time they can't get away with it with me, but they're going to try to get away with the next person. Right. Mm -hmm. So me being the good shepherd I have to beat that reliving crap out of you for you to get it through your head so you know not to do it again. Um, and then I'll forgive you right. if you got to make it through all that. Uh, where are you guys at with it? Uh, I think for me, generally, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I tend to forgive. Yeah, you're not a big grudge like, keeper. I don't, yeah, I've been through a whirlwind of stuff and where I should have massive grudges and should not, you know, you know, but I don't. I, for me, it's a waste of energy is truly what it is. It's if I sit there and think about how you wronged me and, you know, take the effort to put you through a gauntlet. Like, I don't, you know, you wronged me, you know, like I don't, I, I don't, I don't need to beat a dead horse, I guess, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. uh, I also try and judge people on their uh, intentions, not their actions. Um, it's kind of my way of justifying what they've done, you know, in, in a sense of, in that wrongfulness kind of thing. Um, I don't know if it's right, but it works for me. You know, no, it, like, as long as I've known you, like I said, you're definitely the most evolved out of everyone at this table. I don't know if it's evolved it. or just laziness. No, it's, it's definitely evolved really just, because you, <laughs> I'm really trying to think of anybody you've ever had a grudge against as long as I've known you. Um, you're really not a person to hold grudges at all. No. Yeah, and I think you, you hit it on that. So what is even dumber about my concept of forgiveness is everything you just said. I know for absolute fact, like I know that it doesn't work. I know it's a waste of energy. I know all of that stuff. It makes you feel better though. To which part forgive or not forgiving? I think you were talking about the things you do to make the people do. forgive yeah. or to get the forgiveness. <laughs> yes. But again, you know, you're not always going to get that. Well, In fact, more often than not, people you're, are just going to walk away. You are going to get that. Yeah, Either they're going to walk away or they're going to tell you whatever. And then now you're kind of stuck with it. Right. And, why this person do that? I trusted them. I had faith in them. Right. Yada, yada, yada. All the different emotions that kind of go into that when you're in that position of forgiveness or mm -hmm. wanting to forgive somebody. Um, and I will say, and, and Daryl, and actually everybody at this table, it, it, the more sensitive people I've met in my life, ironically, are usually the most violent. And I think that's because, because you wouldn't think that would be the case. That's actually pretty accurate. No, it really is. Yeah. Like fighters I know, boxers I know, thugs I've known, you know, the people that are usually the meanest are usually the most sensitive. And they're usually mean because their feelings get hurt so bad that they, they have to do, they have to lash out. You know, they have to make somebody feel that. And because you can't always do it emotionally, physically, it's usually pretty easy for them. You right. know, they have a knack for it. You got a gift for it. So, you know, I can't make you feel as shitty as I do, but I could definitely punch you in your forehead and that's going to suck for you. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which I, you know, I found that very interesting the older I got that, you know, I've met some stone, stone cold people in my life that- you're like, wow, this guy don't give a crap. And the next thing you know, they're crying about their kid or, 
crying about a relationship that mm-hmm. didn't work out. And you're like, wow, this person's really sensitive. I mean, they're very well aware of their feelings. So how do you go from that to that violence, that anger, whatever? And, and I really think it's because of the, the feelings getting it hurt. It is. It's, and I think it's just all truly about feelings. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's your, you know, as a person, you're feeling away. And the only way you know to kind of get that other person on your level is really through violence because you're feeling so, so hurt and yeah. vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. You just do emotions the same way. Yeah. And when you're happy, you're super happy. When you're sad, you're super sad. And when you're angry, look the hell out. Right. right. That's where that comes from is typically when you're extremely violent or angry when you get upset it's because you're just an extremist as far as emotions go and when you're sad there's a hurricane when you're happy it's sunshine and when you're mad like i said it's look out you know i think that's pretty common i think that's something but it is kind of weird to think about uh and kind of take a step back and look at and Mm -hmm. be like huh (laughs) just saw that dude smash that dude's head through the wall and uh, he's asking me if I read that poetry <laughs> right. and made him tear up. Yeah. I don't, Quoting Shakespeare. Yeah, I don't Julia. understand uh-huh. what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think forgiveness for me, you get a couple chances. Um, what I'm really bad at is when I draw a, lot, when I draw a line in the sand, um, kind of erasing that, that line. You know, uh, like I said, with me, you get, I shouldn't say you get a couple chances. I, I typically try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt until, um, I guess maybe I've had enough or until I've, I've seen enough where I'm like, yeah, I don't think anything's changing with this. Mm-hmm. And then I typically just cut people out and I don't really look back, which I'm not saying is a good thing. Right. That's why I said, I think you're kind of in the middle of, yeah, absolutely. of the two. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Um, you don't hold a grudge often mm-hmm. when you do, you do. Yeah. When I do, I'm never going to talk to you again. Right. Yeah. Um, in talking about it, I can unequivocally say the crappiest parts about me are because I don't forgive. Right. Like the 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 lowest points of my life, mistakes I've made in my life, um, things that I look back on, wish didn't happen, are because I don't forgive. Mm-hmm. Um, either the person and a lot of times myself, like, why did you do that? You should have known better. You know, I should have been smarter than that, kind of beating yourself up over it. Um, And that's really why I wanted to talk about this because it's just super unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And I can talk about it from a place of experience. Mm -hmm. And I can also talk about it from a place of I'm not quite at that point. Um, But I do know that the crappiest parts about me are because I choose to not forgive in a situation. Mm -hmm. So you're holding that and it's just so toxic. And the other real thing that I really noticed is usually the people that are knocking me off track is they're not at that level of growth that I'm at. And they just drag you right down to that. Yep. You know, so you're evolving, you're moving through, leveling up in life, and that person just cuts your legs out and you're like right there with them and then refusing to get back to where you want to be because you don't want to let it go. Right. You know, you don't want to forgive. And like I said, for me, it's very succinctly people that don't say I'm sorry. Mm Mm-hmm. Or shepherd mentality hurts something that I couldn't, you know, I can never imagine. Like if I see somebody hurt a dog or Mm. animal, I'm like, this person should die now. And I want it to happen. Can I participate? (laughs) (laughs) That's where I'm at with it. And I know it just never accomplishes anything. It never resolves the problems ever. Usually makes it worse. Always makes it worse. Um, you look at people that are have been really impactful in this world, have never gone down that road. You know, your kings. I mean, we're just talking about Jesus. But, you know, when you really look at the civil rights movement, what what really made that drastic change was Selma watching – you know, them walk over the bridge and getting ever living crap knocked out of them and not fighting back, not resorting back to violence and people being like, how could you do this to another human being? Mm-hmm. And it just kind of took away that race barrier where 
the the human part of you just kind of overcomes with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I watch that and I'm like, where are the baseball bats and why aren't you popping these people back in the head? Because I'm not that evolved. You know, I have a much harder time, even though I know how well it works. It's just so hard to do. Mm -hmm. Like when I watch that, I'm like, oh my, you are such a bigger person than I am to be able to do that. That's what I say when I, I know the worst parts of me are because I choose to not forgive something, either myself or somebody else. I mean, and you were kind of touching on that earlier, just the amount of energy that goes into that. Yeah. And I, but it's odd you say it because I think as much as I can forgive other people, I don't forgive myself. You know, I think I'm internally hard on myself and mistakes I've made, you know. Now, why do you think that is? I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's almost that, almost like that masochistic tendency of like, you know, if I keep reliving that mistake, then, uh, you know, I keep beating myself up about it. I'm not going to do it again. Gotcha. You know, kind of thing. So kind of the same thing I'm doing, just yeah. you're doing it to yourself because exactly. of other people. Um we're with other people. I just generally don't care. It's, it's, you know, like I care, but I just don't, it, it's not worth the time or effort where with internally there is that, you know, you know, it took a while to kind of build up some of that, you know, you had to make those mistakes to get to where you are now. Right. Almost kind of back to like last episode with the middle, but, um, but yeah, I don't, I think, you know, um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't, you know, I haven't forgiven myself for mm -hmm. to say the, the least. I think to, to not forgive is pretty selfish. Um, I don't mean that everybody doesn't deserve forgiveness. Some people don't, you know, who am I to decide that now? Well, so I just want to reiterate Jesus. Well, <laughs> <laughs> high five. Um, for, <laughs> For me, when I look at it, if you don't forgive, it's for a selfish reason because your anger is more important to you in that moment than the outcome, the resolution. You know, like somebody comes over and, you know, slaps you in the face. I want to slap him in the face too. For what? Because they did it to me. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you solving? Well, I don't want to forgive them. They publicly embarrass me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what do you want? Well, I want things to go back to where they are. Okay. So figure out why they slapped you, figure out how it never happens again and move on from it. But us as people are like, well, screw that person. Slap me in the face. I don't want to talk to him again. And all you're doing is stunting your own growth. Uh, Cause if you can't forgive, you can't move on. If you can't move on, you can't learn a lesson. And if you don't learn a lesson, it's literally impossible to grow. It's like the definition. Right. Um, so I think that's part of it for me is because I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt of forgiveness because I know that. So I'm one of those people that's super like emotionally sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm that guy that when I'm sad, I'm sad. When I'm happy, I'm super happy. And when I'm angry, uh, I'm really angry. And for me, I know that if I don't forgive, I get caught in some sort of emotion. And mm -hmm. when I get caught in some sort of emotion, I'm not thinking, even when you're super happy, you know, super happy could be an emotion that uh, that's hard to navigate through because you're not seeing clearly. You're living on cloud nine. You're not mm -hmm. living in reality. Definitely. So I think for forgiveness, for me, I look at it as if I give people a shot, um, I'm opening myself up to a better situation because now I have an opportunity to grow through this um, and learn from it, you know, because I'm either going to get burnt or I'm not. Um, and only time will tell, but it's, it's kind of a learning lesson for me. No, it definitely is. And, and, you know, to be clear, forgiving isn't necessarily letting that thing back in your life. No. You know, I mean, you could forgive somebody and Hey, I forgive you for whatever you did, but can't be friends, can't be in this mm -hmm. relationship anymore. We have different ideals. We're different people. Right. But I forgive you for what happened, uh -huh. um, which is completely fine. Absolutely. Um, and I really think it's way more effective. I think that's more impactful to that other person mm -hmm. than, you know, putting them through the ringer, being violent, whatever, you know, just for whatever reason, I have such a hard time if it's not like even today thinking about it, 
like, Hey, okay. We're going to talk about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like, Oh, nice. <laughs> Jesus. This is nice. This is wonderful. And then I started thinking about, Oh, why do you have such a hard time, Eddie? Forgiving. <laughs> I started thinking about people <laughs> and I was like, I know I am not, I don't forgive that person. <laughs> They're an ass. I don't want to forgive them. I hope that a bus rolls over their pinky toe. I don't, <laughs> I don't want any part of it. Yeah. And I was like, when, when I started replaying that playbook in my head, I was like, when has this ever served you? Like, when have you come out on the good end of this? Right. And what did it look like when you go down that? And it's just misery. Mm-hmm. You feel horrible because that kind of hits both sides. One, you feel horrible that it's happening to you. You feel horrible for the other person. Because, you know, a lot of times we don't know. It's kind of like, again, it was like how we talked about love. Mm -hmm. Is it sincere? Is it not sincere? Um, And I think what's so hard for me with forgiveness is I don't want to be a punk. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be that guy you got over on because you're really not sorry. And I chose to believe you. And I'm you ain't fooling me. I know you're full of shit. You're not really sorry. You're not so slick. We think you are Mm -hmm. type thing. Um, And a lot of that is just, you know, environments I've been around, upbringing, stuff like that, survival mode, Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But it's never served me. Right. You know, I keep replaying in my head. the, The crappiest parts about you are because you chose to hang on to something, to not let it go, to not forgive and say, this person is human. They make mistakes. They're at a different evolution period than you are. Right. They're in a different middle. Like we mm-hmm. talked about last podcast than you are, you know, let it go. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there was, it's been some years, I think we did mention a little bit in, in a podcast, the couple podcasts ago, but Maybe four or five years ago, some nut job that went into a church it was a, it was a black church and mm. want to say South Carolina yep. somewhere around there. I think so. Shot up a bunch of people, killed a bunch of people, and you know how you could kind of go in front of the the person and you know you're an asshole. You took my kid type thing is usually how that goes. Mm-hmm. Like one after another was I forgive you. And I was like, I was watching it and my chin was on the floor and I was like, oh my, just imagine the freedom that those people feel because you knew unequivocally they were completely sincere. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a doubt in your mind that they were. And imagine the freedom of being in that place of really having that in your heart of forgiveness, let alone the fact that that's what a real Christian looks like. Mm -hmm. That's what a real follower of Christ is about. All this other stuff is BS. Mm -hmm. You're full of crap. You don't understand the new Testament. You don't understand Jesus's words. You're a phony. This is the real thing. Yep. So that thing of, you know, an eye for an eye, so I could beat the shit out of you because God said it was okay, you know, 6,000 years ago, you know, Jesus kind of put an end to that with forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. So you don't have that out anymore. Right. So stop using it. And I will say, even for me, being a Christian, being a follower of Christ, the shitty things about me, I own. Mm -hmm. I don't blame God. Right. So if I do some stupid crap, I'm not like, oh, God said it was okay because in Psalms, you know, 102, he said, put a thunderbolt up his ass. I don't ever go there. Mm. You know, I own it. I know what I should be doing, what I should not be doing. Yeah. I know what our character flaws in me. I don't blame God for that. I don't blame Jesus for that. Those are my decisions. So if you're claiming to be a Christian, stop using that bullshit. You make us look bad. You make the person that we're stating that we're following look horrible. You make people on the outside look at it like, all right, this is such a loving, great thing. Then why are you such an ass? Right. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you see that a lot. But I, I watched one person after another look at this man in the face and I, I forgive you. Mm-hmm. You know, I hope you can forgive yourself. I hope you find peace for yourself and, and I forgive you. And God loves you. And I was like, wow, yeah. really? It, it's like we talk about, you know, a lot. It's be better, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's simply there's, you know, 
things happen to you in life. You have two paths, you know, to go down. Um, just be better, be a better person. You can be a bigger person and a better person than that person that has wronged you in some way. And also by putting it in God's hands of, Hey, I forgive you. You know, it's up to you to make amends with you know, mm-hmm. your maker. It's that's not for me to judge. That's right. for him to judge. Right. So. And I definitely think for me, that's probably the part that bothers me the most is I know better. Mm. You know, I know that it's not healthy. I know it's not good. It's definitely not the uh, example that, you know, Jesus set for me. It's surely not the example that God set for me. Um, you know, try to be better. And I, I know you're talking about looking in the mirror. I've looked in the mirror, like, stop it. Right. What are you doing? Mm. Where are you going with this? Let it go. Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes my wife crazy because I could be driving and somebody, yeah, you're a bad driver now that I think of it. <laughs> I would thought you have zero forgiveness. Yeah. I with, thought we were going to make it through this whole thing. No, no, yeah, you're back in. Yeah. You're, you're back on this side. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, we're on the yeah. good side. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're out. Now <laughs> I think of it, yeah, you definitely have road rage. Yeah, no, it's bad. Um, when I'm angry, I'm angry, you know? But there's like these things where – you're walking such that fine line of, okay, well, what's going to really make this person, you know, learn. Right. And somehow I feel like it's my personal responsibility to let you know how much of an asshat you are, because if I don't let you know, you're just going to continue being an asshat. And most people don't have the cojones to tell you. So it's my duty to. Yeah. I'm not the one. It's like your go-to line. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the one. Where, where are you coming at? Right. You know, where are you coming from with that? Um, it's just the cost of that is one, and we've talked about violence in the past. I mean, violence is a means of control. It's not mm-hmm. a means of education. Nope. It's not a means of change. You're not going to accomplish any of those things ever with it. Um and it can be very effective in all of those. We've the, all seen it. The ultimate motivator. Definitely. You know, but you're never going to invoke change with it. No. Um, and even when I look at, you were talking earlier about something made me think right away. There was, there was a kid who was kind of running his mouth, you know, a little bit. And we kind of knew that it was go time between him, me and him. And, you know, a crowd kind of started existing and you know, everybody's kind of waiting for me to kick the crap out of the kid. And so we're out there and right away, go ahead, Eddie, show everybody how tough you are. Everybody knows you can kick my ass. Go ahead, tough guy. And you know, I'm not fighting back because everybody knows you're going to beat my ass and yada, yada, yada. It was like so demeaning. It's a bold strategy. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. I went home. <laughs> I mean, That's bold. Like, it's it was a lose lose situation for me. Right. He was bringing all kinds of attention mm-hmm. to me. If one, he catches some pot shot and I go down, it's complete embarrassment. If I do win, it's still embarrassing because you just got done telling everybody, oh, we know what's going to happen anyways, tough guy. Show yeah, everybody how look, tough you are. Look like a bully. For sure, which is something I never want to be. Um, and it kind of shows like how impactful that, that nonviolence, that forgiveness, that knowing that that's really the thing that kind of evokes that change that makes you kind of do a self check and all right, what am I really going to accomplish here? Yeah. So I'm going to do something. Everybody and their mother knows I'm going to do, and it's going to accomplish what and called me out on it. Mm -hmm. And when I think about the, the things that are really impactful for me or, really wanted to make me want to be a better person. It was usually along those lines. It was never anybody uh, refusing to forgive. Right. You know, and sticking by their laurels and everybody I know that's like that is miserable. We live in a country of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally boiling over with nobody wanting to forgive anybody for anything. Mm -hmm. So the Republicans are asses because they did this and the Democrats are asses because of this and your guy's an ass and well, no, your guy's dumb. And it goes on and on and on. And the convenient thing about not forgiving is you lose the dialogue. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we talked about communication quite a few times in the past. You lose that communication because I don't have to communicate with you. I don't forgive you. I don't want to talk to right, you. Right. I don't want you in my life. Mm -hmm. So it's such a cop out. And I hate that mentally that's where I find myself. Now, I'll usually find my way out of it. You know, I'm usually pretty good about being aware and trying to work through that. Kind of set out the peace signals that, hey, okay, I'm kind of open to having that conversation and you know, luckily it usually kind of works itself out. But for me as a human being, that's something I want to be so much better at. You yes, know, I just want I to learn to forget ask, better. Like how do you being aware and like how do you how do you change that? Like what are you doing? You know, like say somebody wrongs you or like in a work environment, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. You guys work in a stressful work environment as it is, you know, is it just a internal check where you kind of stop yourself now and kind of try and you know, or do you have, so, I mean, that was a big reason why I got the tattoo. Okay. You know, it didn't feel pleasant. You know, it feel. wasn't a, a wonderful feeling <laughs> when I got it for me, the back it's brutal. So every second of that, you know, I was saying prayer in my mind, remember this, remember what this feels like and remember why you're getting it. Okay. So usually for me that, forgive them father they know not what they do is is a instantaneous you know gut check for right. me where who the hell do you think you are right like really eddie who do you think you are that you can't forgive somebody mm -hmm. when jesus can forgive in that so are you better than jesus and it Conversation never gonna go well, right? So, <laughs> you know, now am I always able to do that? For Especially plenty. as you said in the moment, right. definitely not always. And you know, honestly, I'm at a point in my life now where sometimes that's what I can't forgive is myself for. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? You know, why are you holding this against people? I have talked to tens and tens and tens of thousands of people in my life. I've seen the best in people, and I've seen the worst in people. And I've seen both in the same people, you know, repeatedly. So I know people make mistakes. I know that that's part of us being human. So do you really got to drag somebody through the dirt for something, you know, it's inevitably, it's inevitably going to happen. Somebody's going to make a mistake. Right. Sometimes they're not even aware of it. They don't even know they're supposed to apologize, let alone that they hurt you, offended you, whatever. And a lot too with that depends on how you came across with it. Correct. You know, so somebody wrongs you and you're an asshole. How could you do that? And, you know, you hurt my feelings. Well, that really doesn't put that person in a position of, oh, I'm so sorry. Right. You know, because now they're kind of on the defense and they're ready to attack too. Well, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to couples where, well, you did this to me and, you know, I only did that because you did that. And well, you hurt my feelings too. And it kind of becomes this, and like I said, again, in politics as human beings, that's really where we're at. Right. You know, we want to be real quick to, well, I only did this because you did that. Yeah. Right. And it kind of, well, what came first, the chicken or the egg right. type of thing. Um, so I always want to be aware of, again, what's the goal? What's the objective? Are you really going to accomplish any kind of the lion's den is about progress. It's about invoking change. It's about leadership. You know, when we say at the end of our, any of our YouTube videos, the book, you know, be a lion among sheep. That's what this is about. Owning your shit, being able to say, you know what? These are things that I'm not happy about my spot myself. And I definitely want to get better. So to answer your question, Am I always able to do it in the moment? No. But, you know, soon after, later on, it'd be like, really? You know, and Alex kind of hit on it. For me, I despise bullies. I always have. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always a kid moving new somewhere. Somebody messed with me for one reason or another. Um, so especially if I find myself becoming a bully in the sense that now I'm bullying that person because I want that you know, acknowledgement. I want right. that apology. I'll feel pretty shitty about it. You're pretty good at that though. In the moment too. I try to be, uh, I mean, we had that incident with you and I we were in mm -hmm. the office and called me a name of a sales manager that used to work there. And I lost my shit. You know, I wasn't, 
screaming, yelling, because I knew I stand up and square with him. I know how that's going to go, and I can hold my own, and I, I knew that wouldn't go well, so I just was pissed, and he knew I was pissed, and I was yelling, and how could you call me that, and I do, whoa, whoa, stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry. Not my intention. Didn't mean it that way. Yeah. I apologize. You know, so, I mean, I think to your credit, I think maybe you don't give yourself enough credit on. Now I've been on the flip side of the coin where it's been <laughs> a week or so, but with that, it's what you said earlier is how it's delivered. No, for sure. So how is that remorse shown? How is that? I'm sorry. Hey, I shouldn't have done this. How is that shown with you? You're pretty good at picking up on how genuine people are. So if it's bullshit, Hey man, listen, I'm sorry. Get the fuck out of here. Right. If it's hey man, listen, I did this, this, and this. I didn't realize how it made you felt. I understand why it made you feel that way. I'm never going to do that again. And right. if you know it's genuine, you're actually pretty quick to flip it off and let it go and move on. It just typically has to be, you know, a good delivery. Well, it has to be like genuine. You know, it's kind of what I said. Yeah. You know, if it's if it's on my terms, I'm great. Mm-hmm. And I think also for me. Because I have no problem doing it. So I'm not better than anybody and no. nobody is better than me. So if I can apologize to you, I could wreck it. Like that day, I didn't matter how mad you were or any of that, I hurt your feelings. Right. Like, and I saw it yeah. in, your, in your eyes. I saw it in your face. Right. And that's what made me feel horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have no problem. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. I mean, I get it. I'm good with that. Yeah. And I think that's also why I'm so sensitive about it when it's back towards me. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'll apologize to you. What's so hard about saying, you know, I'm sorry or whatever. And I think that's what really bothers me about it yeah. is it's not that hard. So for me, honestly, saying I'm sorry or looking for that forgiveness is freeing for me personally. I feel caged until I get that myself. Same exact You know, way. I feel horrible until I at least get that. And I also understand you might not forgive me and you have every right to. I mean, that's your decision. But if I don't get that out there of I'm really sorry, it's definitely not what I meant. Understand why you took it that way. I hope you understand I didn't mean it that way. Um, if I don't get that out, I feel you know, terrible. Well, and even to your point of as long as forgiveness is your way, <clears throat> I think, I think any level of forgiveness, any, any level of that with anybody has to be a level of being genuine. I think everybody should want that. I feel like people don't, but I feel that everybody deserves it. You know, like you, Brad, you're a phenomenal guy, you know, and somebody wrongs you, you're the type of person that should be People go out of their way. Hey, man, I'm so, so sorry, because that's what you deserve, you know, especially being a person that if you're somebody like that to put that out there, you know, you probably get so upset because, hey, man, I I would walk through hell and back to show you that I'm sorry. You can't even look me in the eye and say you were wrong. You got to make me chase you, put you through this. Why can't you just tell me I'm sorry? And I think you're a hundred percent right. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. And I think I'm very similar in that way. I have to remind myself though. You used to tell me all the time. I'm sure you've heard this a hundred times. That person's not you. Mm -hmm. So you can't hold people to the same standard that you hold yourself at because you're at a different point. You're a different person. You have different outlooks. You know, I, I go through it. In, in personal relationships in my life, you know, where mm-hmm. there's something that I'm getting frustrated with at home and it's, why wouldn't you go out of your way? I would walk through the gates of hell and back before I would ever let you feel like any of those mm-hmm. emotions. How no, I remember having those conversations. Call me and say, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Because they're not there yet. They don't understand how to do that. They don't understand the impact of that. Or maybe it's just Might something. Might not have been that exposure in the that home they've never or been whatever. Exposed to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where that forgiveness comes from. 100%. I think when forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. The key words in there, they know not what they do. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. they're not aware of how they're what they're how they're coming across. Yeah. You know, the the spitefulness, the anger, all of that stuff. Um, you know, I think that's a key word of that from when he says that it's the judge on the intentions, not the actions. Yeah, definitely. Um, but to your point too, there's, 
with forgiveness comes that communication that we talk about, you know, All the time, of, yeah. of being open and aware of being like, Hey, you know, if the roles were reversed, this is what I would do. And, you know, whether it be an issue at home or whatever, or a mm-hmm. relationship with somebody, friends or somebody you're close with to be able to kind of pull them aside and even just be like, Hey, you know, you wronged me. Like if the roles were reversed, this is how I would handle it, you know? And, and that may trigger that conversation and them to realize what their actions really are. Right. And then, you know, you may get that, Oh dude, I'm sorry. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Um, so it's an interesting. Well, we kind of talked about that earlier. I mean, the key thing is, is yeah. I mean, did you even leave that window open mm-hmm. for that person to say, I'm sorry, right. or to show remorse? Right. Or were you on the attack right away where they were like, oh, wait a second. Right, right. You know, I screwed up, but did it have to be all that? And, um, you know, that for sure changes the dynamic. You know, my big thing is you might not get none of the above ever, mm-hmm. ever. You might not ever have that conversation. You might not. And really the things for me that I held, there wasn't those. That's right. actually what killed me about it. Yep. You know, that's why I can't let it go because you don't have that closure. You don't have that, you know, that you lay everything on the table and this is what it is. We're going our separate ways, but mm-hmm. this isn't what I meant. Whatever the case may be. Got what ifs. Yep. Yep. And you just don't really ever have that closure. So, you know, when you don't have closure with somebody, you start filling in the blanks yourself. And when you're filling in those blanks, kid, if you're in a great mood, you think the best of the person, ah, they probably didn't mean it that way. And, you know, maybe I took it the wrong way. If you're in a shitty mood that what an ass, Yep. how could they have said that? I bet they meant this. I bet they mm-hmm. meant that. Um, you know, and that's the real danger with it. And forgiveness should come because we all deserve to be forgiven because we've been all forgiven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't come with, well, hey, if you tell me the right way, I'll think about it. If you walk through fire, I'll definitely consider it. You know, it, it can't come with all these prerequisites to forgive somebody. It's it's being able to say, even if you can't talk about it, even if you can't put it correctly, whatever, I understand you're human. I understand you made mistakes and I'm going to forgive you for it because I'm human too and I make mistakes too. Yep. You know, I think the problem becomes, well, I definitely make mistakes, but I would never make the mistake you just made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. It's godly of you. That's, that's how Jesus would have done it. <laughs> I've, done, I've done some dumb shit, but you've done some really dumb hey, shit. Hey, bro, you got the crown for that. <laughs> you know, and that really becomes a danger in it, that self-righteousness, which we'll definitely have a podcast about out of well what i did is way different than what you did mm-hmm. so you know i should be forgiven <laughs> but not you and that's why i always use those mm-hmm. things that trigger everybody kids mm-hmm. animals um anything that has an innocence that's being messed with where you're like that's that's unforgivable right you know there's there's no forgiving that right you're a horrible shitty evil human being you deserve to die mm-hmm. um And I think we all feel that initially because you see that harm and that protector in you comes out, the shepherd in you comes out, the, you don't want to see innocence harm. So I'm going to stand up. You're going to have to come through me to do it. Angel of Christ. Yeah. Soldier for Christ. And I think all this God, you you know, (laughs) you sit this one out. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) I mean, you know, all of that is noble, but at what point? What price? And does that really invoke the change no. that you're looking for? And like I said, if you really look at history, I don't know that person. No. And it I might be noble, that but it's not righteous. I mean, it's no. not taught. And God, I mean, you don't want that. No, forgiveness. So literally one of the earliest teachings, one of you will betray me tonight. Right. Followed by forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Mm-hmm. What else do you need? What else do you need? Um, I think what I struggle the most with, with forgiveness is um, what we were just talking about. I have the hardest time um, not understanding why people don't 
feel the same way I feel in situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really know how to describe it. You know, I'm I'm far from perfect. I'm far from uh, an excellent, perfect human being, but I feel like I try to go out of my way when I do things wrong, you know, and that feels good. And you are really willing to own up to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I make a mistake, I try to own up to it because I know how bad it feels for me when something's done to me and somebody just doesn't take responsibility for Mm -hmm. it. And I'm not saying I don't hurt people. I don't, I don't say things that hurt people's feelings, but I always try to make that rectified, Mm -hmm. you know, and when that doesn't happen, that's when I really, really struggle with forgiveness. I guess when I started this conversation, I said, I give you a couple chances. I think that's what I mean by that of, I give everybody the chance to maybe earn forgiveness, which is kind of screwed up when I say it out loud. (laughs) Uh, But I mean, I kind of give everybody the opportunity to show me how sorry they are. <laughs> and that would be your back old yeah, right yeah, so, you know, yeah. just, you know. And <laughs> I guess that comes from a place of where I would be at. Yeah, I'm coming over. That yeah. mic turned on. Yeah. <laughs> um And it's, it's because, like I said, I take it so seriously when I do somebody wrong, Mm -hmm. like when I hurt your feelings or if I let you down, like I take it so, so hard Mm -hmm. and I feel like I got to prove it. And then I've got to do it again Mm -hmm. to show you how sorry I am. And it's not fair of me to hold other people to that standard because what is going out of my way to show I'm sorry Maybe somebody saying half of what I said or doing half of what mm-hmm. I did, maybe no, that's for sure. them stepping out of their comfort zone. Right. Absolutely. So who am I to tell that's you how sincere you're being? I don't know how sincere you're being. Right. You're feeling what you're feeling. So shame on me for saying, Eddie, I would have done this, this, and this. You didn't do this, this, and this. So you're not sorry. What I don't know is Eddie will, Alex, nine times out of 10, when I'm sorry, I just shut down. Mm-hmm. I called you on the phone. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I Good called people. you. That's my way of saying I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Shame on me for not respecting the fact that you stepped out of whatever your comfort zone is to make an effort. Definitely. And that's something I got to get better with. How I do that, I don't know. I think it's just being self-reflective when you're upset, angry, frustrated, and trying to judge the person on the intention, not the action. Mm -hmm. And even if the intention wasn't there, maybe if you know the person really well, judging them on their history. You know, this Mm -hmm. person typically isn't like that. So they are like that. So maybe they're not doing it to screw me. Maybe they're doing it because they're going through something now I feel guilty. Maybe this person needs me. Maybe this person needs my help because right. that's out of character, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what that looks like. I would say that's just mm-hmm. probably my biggest struggle. No, definitely. Uh, I, I think, you know, the history thing is good to judge people, you know, you can an asshole's an asshole, really, mm-hmm. you know, and be like, yeah, they wronged me, but look at all the other people they wronged. And, uh, You know, all those other people probably didn't get an apology either. Right. So even from my perspective of forgiveness, it's, you know, uh, there's people I know that are extremely selfish that, that you would, uh, you know, you'd use that history and that, you know, their body of work to be like, "Eh, it's not surprising. I didn't get a, I'm sorry, or, you know, or, or whatever. So, uh, that's a really good point to kind of really know who you're dealing with to kind of, to also learn what their, what their comfort zone right. is. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, that being said, it's hard. It, it's very hard, yeah, it is. you know, and, and really for me, there's a lot of instances where, you know, I've forgiven somebody, um, and, and I've never got that closure like we talked about, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't dwell on it. It's not something that keeps me up at night where I think for you guys, it's more where the more you reflect on it or replay it, it, it it kind of drives that. Yes. You know? Yeah. So I agree. Uh, for me, it really doesn't. Um, I don't know why, you know, it just doesn't. No. And to your point, it, it really does. And it's never really any specific person. It could just be that thing, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, uh, gets your blood pressure going up and then you're angry and then, you know, you're driving behind the wheel and you're cursing people out. <laughs> Take it easy. You're standing right asking them to pull over <laughs> and stuff like that happens. Um, it just, it's 
so unhealthy and this isn't going to accomplish anything. Right. And like I said, I've been around long enough to know that it, it's just not, you can't beat up the whole world. No, you can't curse out the whole world. Well, and if you can, then what? Right. So you do it. What did you accomplish? Well, a, right. I mean, just not, it just isn't going to invoke the change that you no. want. And that's really why, you know, it was so important to talk about it mm -hmm. and we're making light of it and telling jokes and all that. And it's great. It's a good way to come about it, but I'm completely aware of that. It's not healthy for me. Right. And that's really what I want to come out and say that, Hey, this is thing, something about me that I'm not happy with my growth and I'm not, I'm not where I want to be at with it. Right. And I'm going to forgive myself <laughs> and understand that I'm human. That was too easy. Was way too easy for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I have growth to do there through prayer, talking to people, understanding and, you know, all that stuff. And even the more I talk to people, the more I'm consistently shocked that, Somebody that I thought might be an ass or whatever is actually a pretty good person, either going through some stuff or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Bill was somebody who, you know, and it's funny because Bill's been on a couple times. Mm -hmm. People really enjoyed him being on. For sure. Absolutely. You know, Bill made me crazy when yes. I first met him. <laughs> made me nuts. Cause he was very convicted and this is how things are. And this is how I want them. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. And wasn't in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. So really wasn't in a position to tell anybody anything, you know, cause you're working for everybody. Right. So, okay. Well, you know, where are you at to be able to tell people this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and to see his growth and all that he's accomplished and, the last four years is astonishing. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's astonishing. And you're just like, and he's no spring chicken. It's not like he's a young buck and right. you know, it was elastic and springs right back. It's a guy that had a tough life. Right. You know, and lived all those years of a tough life and found it in his heart to be able to self-reflect mm -hmm. and forgive people, understand that, hey, I made mistakes. I, I know other say, people yeah. make mistakes. It's and again, I love that. Yeah. Like that's probably one of the most exciting things for me I could see in somebody is when they have that growth and be able to say, have that forgiveness for themselves and others, that humility, I guess is the word I'm looking yeah, for. It's a great point. You know, I think it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's Bill's very self-aware, you know, mm -hmm. I think the takeaway is too, is you've become more self-aware about, you know, forgiveness and, and maybe through this conversation, somebody listening also is like, ah, you know, that is something I need to work on. I think just being aware of it is kind of what stops the, stops the trend. No doubt about at. it. So I think that's, Absolutely. The, you know, for me, the, the takeaway is that is, is, you know what, like, you know, maybe even on the other spectrum, like we talked about, you know, somebody might be working on that self-awareness of forgiveness. So yeah, I might not get that, you know, I'm sorry back. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, cause they're in the middle. Cause they're in the middle. Yep. Exactly. So, Definitely. So that's, I think for me, that's the take. And I would, yeah. I would say that that's, you know, my ask from this is, you know, if you're to a place where you're listening to this and I'm like, you're like, I don't want to forgive people. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to forgive this person that did this, this or that. You know, I really hope that you reflect and see what mm -hmm. that's doing for you. Mm -hmm. Is that serving you? Because again, it's the worst parts about me. Is that forgiveness that I refuse to give or just can't get over or, you know, whatever. And a lot of them I'm over now, but in those bad points in my life where was when I was at that point where I'm like, I'm not letting this go. Yeah. I'm dying on this cross. I don't mm. right, wrong and different. This is where it's the cross I'm going to die on. So I hope that through this conversation, you can look at that, acknowledge that you might be in the same boat as me where, Hey, I'm aware. Definitely want to try to work that through. Not there yet, but I, you know, I want to get better with that. Yeah. And I mean, I think I'm not going to go into it right now. We're kind of getting, getting tight on time, but <clears throat> one perfect example for me that I definitely, definitely want to get into in the future. So hold me to it is talking on forgiveness. You know, we, we've talked a lot about why it's so hard to forgive tonight. 
and like you said, we've made light about it. And I mm-hmm. think it was important to do that because um, that's such a heavy thing. It is a heavy subject. I'd like to talk about an experience in the future that I had an opportunity to forgive and I got to reap the benefits from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. It was the night I lost my old man. And I mm-hmm. think walking people through that, that, what was it, like 72 hours, 48 hours, uh, anger, sad, more anger, more anger, more anger, mm-hmm. followed by forgiveness was probably one of the top three decisions I've ever made in my entire life. No, unequivocally. And reaping that benefit selfishly of what that felt like to forgive, to make amends before it was too late. Completely different perspective and outlook now compared to people that were in the same situation I was that didn't handle it the same way. Mm-hmm. And no, you get definitely. to see what that looks like. And mm-hmm. like I said, I'm not going to get too far into it because I could talk about that for an hour alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but try it. You might be surprised, you know, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If, if you're not forgiving and and you're not happy with it, try it and it's going to be hard. Uh, but you might be surprised with what you find. I know I was, I know it was something I didn't think I'd ever be able to do. Um, not because my dad was a terrible human being. He was who he was. Um, but just because the relationship that we had had for a very long time for a while, was really great for a while. It was really not. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't think that was ever going to be a place that I'd be able to be at. Um, and I'm here Mm -hmm. and it was completely life-changing for me. So I'm, I'm excited to share it. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing, I I mean, the last thing I would add to it is, you know, you reap what you sow. So if you want to be forgiven and there will 100% be a moment in your life, you'll want it, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to give it to. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. So thank you everybody. Thanks for the conversation. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Again, please like, subscribe, share. Hope this was valuable to some people. Um, hope you get something from it and uh, hope you could find a little more forgiveness in your heart. God bless. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And uh, just keep an eye out. We had our uh, our first short come out uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. So we've got uh, some more coming here. So uh, appreciate everybody checking those out and keep an eye out for them. For sure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.